This year, the Air Force implemented one of the biggest changes to the enlisted evaluation system. When Chief Morris and I would walk around and talk to airmen, uh, a lot of questions about this whole process. Uh, some of the questions were about, you know, how do I get a promotion recommendation? How do I, how the process is going to roll out? What about the standard closeout dates? And probably the biggest thing that were on folks' mind was the enlisted evaluation force distribution board process. That's what this video is all about. Let me talk a bit about some boards, and I think there are some key elements to a board. First and foremost, it has to be fair. Our airmen, regardless of AFSC or where they work, should have a sense of fairness about this whole process and know that the process is, in fact, fair. Second, it has to be repeatable. So regardless of which board we implement, that the, each board has the same exact process so that we share fairness between one board to the next board. Third, it has to be about rewarding documented performance. That's why EPRs are so important. Fourth, it has to be professional. You know, the recorders and our commanders actually take an oath, and that's how serious I take this whole process. And lastly, the process has to be transparent. You know, if our process isn't transparent and that you don't understand it, then I think that's just going to demotivate folks. And that's not what this process is supposed to be about. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first slide. All right, let's start with the panel review process. As you can see on this, the 55th Wing Enlisted Force Distribution Panel had five allocations for promote now and 10 allocations for must promote. It's important to also point out that there were rules engagement, that we only looked at 39 selected folders that were nominated by each squadron commander. These folders had an airman's brief on the left and it had the top three EPRs in the current grade on the right side, and I'll spend more time on this in a subsequent slide. The scores were received by all commanders who were then scored virtually for those that were not at off it, but for those that were at off it, we actually scored everything in a conference room. The Alyssa Force panel uh, membership was made up of a senior raider, which was me as a wing commander, a command chief who served as an advisor, and then the commanders, unit commanders who nominated their individuals, as well as we had recorders, and I'll spend some time on the recorders as well. So, roles and responsibilities. Senior Raider, who was me, was a panel president and a voting member. The command chief uh, was an advisor, and commanders were our scoring panel members. Recorders assisted with administrative uh, actions associated with the panel, but more importantly, they actually ensured that the process was conducted fairly and that all records were actually complete. So, what were my responsibilities? I administer an oath to each of the panel members. I think that's important to understand that the, this process was in fact, a process that required an oath. If, uh, if it was just some random process, we wouldn't have to go through the process of doing an oath, but in fact, we did an oath for both the panel members and the recorders. Ensuring the consideration of all airmen without prejudice or partiality, and I took this very seriously. And finally, that we distributed authorizations that were allocated to the wing. The commanders. The commanders represented the airmen that they nominated in their unit, but they also scored all records. Um, may, they did not delegate their, their responsibilities unless in extreme circumstances. And in this case, it was up to me to make sure that the commanders were there present and if the, that the circumstances that they had were in fact extreme. We did have a couple cases where we did have to excuse some commanders. Um, we also had to assure that the airmen, that they represent the airmen consistently fair and in an equitable manner. The command chief played an incredibly important role. Um, was the only enlisted member that represented the panel. Uh, was not a non was a non voting member and only was an advisor. Now here's one thing I'll tell you about the command chief and the role that they played. He played. Um, started with the little brown book. Spent some time right up front and went through what is the expectations of a tech sergeant. I tell you that actually was incredibly incredibly helpful. Enlisted force distribution panel recorders. There's two recorders. There's a personnel recorder who would answer any administrative question. They also advised the president and the commander of the panel process and ensured that they were follow, we were following the AFI um, and also make sure that at least one recorder was present during any physical deliberations. One of the things, in fact, just to, so you understand it too, is if when I was done with one folder and grading it, I had to give it to a recorder who then turned it to another um, panel member so that there, that there was complete and total control of all the records. There were additional records. They were there for in case we needed someone to, uh, with, to search for metal records or perform other administrative actions as needed. Now let's take a look at the selection folder. There's two parts. On the left side was a career data brief. On the right side were the last three EPRs in the current grade. So if some folks have asked, well, what could I do to help in this process? Well, one is you can start by double checking your DVB, making sure that the information is actually correct. If you want to take it one step further, check that against your EPRs, make sure that there is no information that is um, missing or that the DVB and the EPR is out of congruence. 
So you want to make sure that the information that the board looks at is most accurate and is most correct. On the right hand side you'll see the three EPRs. Here's what you could do. Work with your supervisor to make sure that your EPRs are actually done in, on, on time. Um, I would tell you the, thing, the other thing I might recommend too is go to the Little Brown Book. And if you see areas within the Little Brown Book that may not be covered to the degree that you are really doing your job and your performance, make sure your EPR reflects it. And that Little Brown Book is incredibly important. All right, scoring scale. The scoring scale, we use this just as a, an officer promotion. It's a six to a 10 scale where an average is a 7.5, the above average eight to eight and a half, and outstanding is anywhere from a nine to a 10. It's the same scoring scale we use for officer promotions. And I thought it was a pretty good sc uh, scoring scale to use for this process as well. All right, defining splits. There are occasions where a board member may actually look at a record differently than another board member, which would generate a split, which means a record score is more than a 1.5 difference. So in this case, we actually, you see, we have a seven and somebody has an 8.5. What we did after the scoring was done, we brought all the members back in and the members sat down and worked between each other to relook at the records and see if there's something missing. In some cases, like in this case, a seven, they may have missed something that somebody who has an 8.5 had seen, and then we talk about it amongst all the board members. An 8.5 may actually put more lever or more weight on something that a 7.0 had did not put weight in. So between all the, the, the panel members, what we actually did is got them all together, went through, in some cases, a seven may go up to a 7.5, and an 8.5 may go down to an eight, or may go up to a 7.5, but at the end of the day, the splits were all resolved and we had no issues on this one in terms of um, having to have the panel members come back and reevaluate other than just one time. So let's go through an example to some more extent. So in this case, we actually have a board score of 38. And after discussion, you can see that um, it, one of the board members actually came back and said, hey, it's really, I'm going to reevaluate and I'm actually, I, I put more weight on something than maybe the other board members didn't. So I'm actually going to go to an eight. In this case, then the split would be resolved, and then that's where we got the total score. Just so that we didn't start from scratch, we actually did a trial run. We had a practice round in which only two records were reviewed. The commander scored the records, the quarters piled the scores, and then the panel president reviewed all the data. And then afterwards, we actually did a practice resolution. What I'll tell you is that was hugely beneficial. The fact that you got a chance to look at different records, to see that different people were looking at um, different elements of someone's background and performance, some people put some weight on some things, some people put other weight on others, and we had a chance to talk amongst the panel members about what areas were maybe more important, maybe some areas that weren't important. How about leadership? How about awards? How about um, getting the opportunity to lead um, a, a professional organization? Those are the kinds of things that we actually did during this the trial run. So phase one, this is the panel scoring. Each commander received a small stack of records to review and gave a score. As you can, after you complete the scoring, the records, we actually annotated in a sheet and then we raised our hands and then the recorder came and grabbed the records. Um, then they moved them from stack to stack to each of the members and then they processed all of them through, um, through the distribution of the records flow for each score. Um, and then one of the things we did too is we had the recorders there to actually help. So in some cases, we may read a record and something in there just didn't quite make sense to a, a commander may read and go, well, I'm not a medical person, so it's really difficult for me to understand the importance of what this person did. That way we can then talk to a, a commander from that unit and say, what is, how would you evaluate the, this performance level? And then we can actually have the opportunity to actually talk amongst one another to do that. Um, in some cases, we found that maybe is there, is there something missing in a record? And then we would go back and actually look to see, is it missing? Or maybe there, in fact, it was not missing. In phase two, what we did is we actually did the order of merit. So we compiled all the scores, went through and res resolved all the splits and ties, and then we had a discussion. Now this panel discussion, I think it's important to note, is that we actually brought in all the geographic separated units so that they were part of these discussions. So those that were at Kadena, Mildred Hall, and at Davis Mothin were actually part of this discussion. Once we did that, we uh, went through the allocation. So as I've talked, we had five um, that we provided in the uh, Promote Now, and we had 10 must promotes that we signed out. Once we had all the splits resolved and we had those 15 folks identified, then I signed out on the uh, panel score sheet. So the op brief. So here's the op brief. So we had 17 commanders and one command chief and advisor who, who convened the two days uh, with, for the wing. Um, in those two days, we looked at 39 records and of, 20, and of those 39 records, 29 came from different AFSCs. Five tech sergeants received a promote now 
The 10 er received an earned and must promote, and then 24 earned a promote. One of the things I think would be interesting and wanted to make sure you understood too is that there was not any one AFSC that had more of a weight than any others in terms of earning a promote now or must promote. For the five promote nows, we had four different AFSCs represented. For the 10 must promotes, we had nine different AFSCs represented. Across the wing, we actually looked at 273 records. This is both for the small unit board, where I was a panel chair, and the other large boards. This represented 73 AFSCs. Of the promote nows, they were awarded at a 7% clip with the wing's eligible TEP sergeants and represented 18 different AFSCs. The must promotes were awarded at 11% and were represented by 24 different AFSCs. Promotes were at 68%. Not ready to promote was at 11% and not, do not promote was at 3%. So if you look at the distribution across the wing, this is exactly what the Air Force briefing team, when they came and said, this is what we think the distribution would look like. Our distribution was matched up just as we were brief, uh, briefed by this team. So if you look at it, I think this is exactly what we expected. I think there's some key takeaways from this board process. First and foremost, it's about the importance of the Alyssa Force structure in the Little Brown Book. You know, Chief Morris did a phenomenal job of highlighting the importance of the Little Brown Book and what it says about document performance. And we used that through this whole board process. The second is that we also looked at the whole airman concept, whether it's leadership job, job performance awards, or uh, the, your involvement in outside organizations. That's all taken into consideration in the whole airman concept. The last is, I left and I hope that you feel the same way, is that I'm very confident in the system and our, our leaders are actually picking the right folks to compete for promotion recommendations. So if I want to go back and talk a little bit about this whole board process I started with, first and foremost, I think the process was fair. Secondly, it is definitely repeatable. As you saw in there, it was from the scoring system to the board composition, that is very repeatable. Third is that, in fact, we did look at rewarding documented performance. That's all we looked at is just documented performance. Uh, professionalism, absolutely. The board was very professional in this. The board recorders and the commanders took their oath very serious. And finally, as this video I think is showing, is that I'm very serious about communicating and educating all of our folks about key processes on the installation, including the transparency in our enlisted evaluation force distribution board panel process. So I hope that you got something out of the video. I'll tell you the one thing I'll leave with you is if you still have questions and if you don't know if you, if you don't understand it, then please ask your supervisor or commander to help explain the whole process to you. This should not be a mystery, okay? Thanks again, thanks for everything you do. And as always, thanks for the things you do for our win because the sun never sets in the Finding 55th.